Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Nedorim Ayin Dalet. We begin on top of the Ahmed right at the Mishnah. Shemeres Yavam. So you have an Isha whose husband passed away without leaving any children. This Isha is now a Yavama who's awaiting mitzvah Yibam, which will be performed by her husband's brother, Yavam, or brothers, several Yavamin. So each one will have the option of either marrying her and be Mekai Mitzvah Sibam or doing the Chalitza process, removing the shoe, etc., which also will accommodate her needs. Typically, we let the older brother do it, as we learned in Mesech HaSivamais. Now, pertaining to our sugya, which is the sugya of Haforas Nadarim, as we learned, an Isha, who is post-Kiddushin, she was engaged to this fellow, and she has Nadarim, her chassan, together with her father, can join forces and nullify her nadarim, provided she's young enough that she's still in her father's jurisdiction. What about a yivama? This isn't really a typical engagement. It's not something that the yavam initiated. right? She was married to his departed brother. It's the Torah that mandates, that requires that the yavam step forward and accommodate the Isha by way of marriage or Chalitza. How do we treat this relationship in terms of Hafaras Nedarim? Is it as though she's engaged to the Yavam, anticipating his marriage, like a regular Kala to Chasim? In which case, he would theoretically have the ability to disrupt her Nedarim? Or shall we say it's different? This isn't like your typical Arusa, fiancé, who is already somewhat in her future husband's uh, control, so to speak, as per her faras nadarim. So which way is it? We have a three-way machlikas. Yes, no, and sometimes. Says the Mishnah, Shemer Yavam, an Isha who is awaiting mitzvah sivam, to be performed by her departed brothers, departed husband's brother, whether there's only one potential Yavam there, or even if there are two potential you know, candidates, well, only one will do the Yavam, but there are two brothers there. Either way, the Yavam uh, can go ahead and decide to disrupt Ternadar. Why? Because the fact that she is um, bound to Yivam. She's bound to this fellow, the Yavam. Now, which one of the two? The Gemara will get into that. But we treat it like a regular engagement, like a regular Arusa, in which case he can step up and do her for us, Nadarim. Rabbi Shua Imer, well, it depends. If there's only one Yavam there, She's slated for him. She's bound to him. She's connected to him. In which case, it's as though she's engaged to him. And we let him do afaras nedarim. Avalog l'shnayim, but not so when there are two potential yavams on the wings. How do we know which one will do the yavam? And therefore, none of them have the ability to do afaras nedarim. Rabbi Kiva Eimer, never. Loy le'echad v'loy l'shnayim whether she's awaiting one Yavam. And certainly, if there are two candidates on the sidelines, none will have the ability to do a Faras Nadarim. Now the, Gemara, the Mishnah will play out the, uh, the debate between these Shittas, each one substantiating his position. Omar Belazar, I'll prove to you that a Yavam is treated like an Arusa. Which allows for a faras nedarim. Ma'im isha shakanu hula atzma. Look, a fellow went ahead and was mekadesh an isha. He personally acquired her. So it's his own personal doing. Still, we say he acquires control. Harei hu mei for He now has the ability to be mei for even though it's his doing. Certainly in a ivama situation, 
Where it's heaven sent. It's a match made in heaven. Isha like a Yavama who was granted to him from heaven. Of course, certainly, definitely, we treat it as such. Doesn't it lend to the fact that he should have a forest and Dharma abilities? If his own acquisition gets in that, certainly a heaven sent acquisition. Not so quick. Certainly, if this ability applies by an Isha who you personally acquired, that makes sense. You know why? She is exclusive to you. She ain't lacherim barushas. Nobody. Nobody else is on the scene. A man is Makadash and Isha. She is his. So I fully understand that he has the ability to be Mayfin and Darel. She's under his, his control, as opposed to by a Yavama. Toimar be Isha, she can live in a Shamayim. Our Yavama is so different. She is Lachirim Barushus. Look, he's not the only player. There are others there as well, other brothers. She's not exclusively designated to him. So why would you grant him? Writes to me from the dorm. How much are we sure? So we sure responds to him. One second, Akiva. One second, hold it. To Varecha Bishne Yavaman. Your argument that others are there as well that holds true when there are two brothers there who are, you know, each one potential, a potential Yavam, right? So you can't say she's designated, you know, to Ruven. Maybe Shimon will do the Yavam. I understand. Ma'ato Meshev al Yavam Echad. But suppose there's only one brother, one surviving brother. This Yavam is meant to do the Yavam. There's nobody else on the scene. So in that case, why can't you agree with Rebbe Lezer? We'll treat him like a chassan. We'll treat her like her Zarusa. And allow him to do a faras nadarim. Oh, Marlai, to which Rebbe Kiva responded, there is still a difference between a Yavama and a regular Isha. Ein ha Yavama gmurli Isha. The Yavama's tie to the Yavam isn't as strong, isn't as committed, isn't as um, inherent, isn't as complete. Kishem sha Rusa gmurli Isha. It's not as an Arusa who is fully committed and bound to her future husband. The Gemara will explain what exactly he had in mind. We don't treat a Yavama like an Isha's Ish. We don't treat her like a, a regular Isha who had Kedushin. And therefore, likewise, with respect to Afaras Nadarim, Yavam cannot make Afaras Nadarim. So we have three Shittis. Rabbi Kiva says, nothing doing. Rabbi Shua says, sure. A Yavam is somewhat like a husband can do a faras and dorim, provided he's the only one on the scene. But not when there are two yivam, in which case we don't know which one will do the yivam. Rabbi Leza says, even when there are multiple candidates for yivam, a faras and dorim can happen. Why? Says the Gemara, I understand Rabbi Svara. We don't reckon with Zika. This uh, being, you know, bound and enslated to the Yavam doesn't really constitute a proper bond. She's not like a Mikudesh to him. Forget about Avaras and Dharam. Rabbi Yeshua suffered Yesh Zika. On the other hand, Rabbi Yeshua does hold of Zika, meaning the fact that the Yavama is slated for the Yavam. She's bound to him. She's designated for him. That makes us treat her like his wife. Like an Isha Makodeshis. But it only works when there is one Yavam. So, in fact, she is designated for him. But not by two Yavam, as we explained in the mission. The problem is, how do we understand Rabbi Lezer? Who takes it a bit farther? He stretches it. Ella Rabbi Lezer, my time. What's Rabbi Lezer's reason? So, certainly, E.H. Zika, even if we apply the Zika concept, the fact that the Yavam is slated for the Yavam, it's like one foot in, she's like already partially married to him, she's like a Kudeshis. Okay, that works, but when we have two brothers, so for sure, Yezika, but what about 
the fact that we can't pinpoint which brother will do the Yibam. Ain Bereiro, we can't just, you know, guess and say, well, this is the brother, until it actually happens. How do you know which one was the Yavam? So why does Rebbe Lezer say, a Yavama, who's presenting herself to two brothers, should be treated like a Isha Mukodesh to her husband? Um, Rabbi Ami, you know what the case is? Kigan Mama. Mama. Typically, all would agree that it, you know, it doesn't work when you have multiple candidates. But one brother stepped forward and did a sort of kiddushin that you can do with a Yevama. So the mitzvah sivim is living as married. He didn't do that. He gave her a coin, gave her a ring, like a regular kiddushin. And that makes her his. Rabbi Lezer here is in line with Shitas Be'i Shammai, who tell us a grand novelty, a big chidush. The Amri, they, they hold. Ma'amar koine kinyan gomer. Even though ideally a Yivama should live as married with a Yivam, but if there is a ma'amar done, kiddushin done to the Yivama, he has acquired her. After which, if he wants to separate, he has to give her a get. She's like his wife. We learn it from a pasuk, but the kachal like isha, we treat her also like a regular wife. Not just yibum can accomplish marriage; even ordinary kedushin can do so. That's what happened here. She was a shemer siyavim because her husband passed away without children. Now we have two potential candidates: Reuben and Shimon, two brothers, who each one can do yibum. Reuben stepped forward and gave her a ring. It was mekadoshim. She is now Rubens, in which case we treat her like a regular Arusa, a regular Mikudeshas, which allows Ruben to do a forest in the Torah. But Rabbi Yeshua, Rabbi Yeshua takes issue with this. Because even if you are right, Mamar can make that bond. But not when there are two brothers. Look, Rabbi Yeshua, I will tell you, that's true and well. When it's only one brother on the scene. But if there are two brothers on the scene, even if one of which gave her kedushin, you can't treat her as his wife with respect to our topic. Why? Can you even suggest that there should be a case? You see, even if we treat Mama as a proper kedushin, but after all, she's still a Yivam. She's still pre Yivam, right? Suppose the other brother. So Reuben did the Mamar, but Shimon stepped forward and did something wrong. He did Bia with the Isha. He did a Get. He shouldn't have done it, but he did. The Allah is, and this is discussed in great length in Masechah Yivam, is he interferes. That act will get in the way of Reuben's relationship with the Yivam. So apparently, the connection, the bond between the Ivama and Reuben who did the Mamre isn't really complete, isn't really, you know, con- haven't, hasn't really concluded, so to speak. The process is still ongoing. The fact is somebody can come and interfere and disrupt the process. If it was complete, nobody can do that. So again, me, Kamidi, can you suggest a, a situation that the other brother would come along and disrupt it, interfere, usher, like you can actually make her usher on Reuben who did the Mamre. How? By... Shimon doing Babiya or Yibagita, which indicates that he has a say in the matter. He's still on the scene. She's not fully connected to Ruben Umefer. So, how can you suggest that under these circumstances we treat her as Ruben's wife with respect to Afaris and Dharm? You can't say that. She's not really his yet. So, that's Rabbi Shua's opinion. True, there's only one brother on the scene who did Mamar. Good to go. Perhaps even without Mamar. Zika, the fact that she's bound to him, works wonders. But when there's another brother on the scene, even if one of the brothers did mamar, it's not a complete process. She's not completely connected to him. The other brother is still a player. And therefore, we can't treat her like a Mukodesh to Ruven. That's his opinion. For Rebekiva, Savarein Zika, and Rebekiva, that's the third sheet, who holds that Ivama never gets a and Dharam from the Yavam because he disagrees with this idea of Zika. He says, uh, you know, the fact that she's bound to him she slated for him. We don't treat her like an Arusa. doesn't have the same impact. 
So again, a forest and dwarren by Shemeras Yavan. Three sheetas. Rabbi says always, the age Zika, and even when there are two brothers, and one of them did mamar, she's like his. Rabbi Shua says, one brother I agree, the age Zika, but two brothers skipped them, a forest and dwarren. Rabbi Kiva says, never. Ain Zika. Ask Stigamar. So we're assuming that, according to Rabbi Lezer, Lefibi Shamai, Mamar accomplishes much. But that's not really universally, you know, accepted. That approach to Beishamai isn't necessarily so. You see, this Shittas Rabbi Lazar and Amoira, who disagrees with that interpretation of Beishamai, he holds that even according to Beishamai, Ma- Mamar doesn't accomplish that much. So back to square one. Well, the Rabbi Lezer, the Amar, according to Rabbi Lezer, Shittas and Beishamai, the Amar, Mamar, even the Beishamai, in Kaina, doesn't really acquire her. It only does some sort of a uh, semi-connection. Ela lidchois bitzara only pushes away the other competing wife. So basically the story was, we have three brothers, Reuben and Shimon, who are married to sisters. Reuben married to Rachel, Shimon married to Leah. Reuben passes away. And there's another brother, Levi, who's, let's say, unmarried. And he was meant to do yibum to, uh, to Rachel, Reuben's wife. He did mamar. Somewhere in between. He got the process started. And then Shimon passes away, leaving behind Leah as a new Yibama. Now, Le- Levi is stuck. He can't marry both, because they're sisters, right? You can't have a chais isha. The wife's sister is usher to you. But he already did mamar to Rachel, which would sort of preempt Leah. Do we consider Leah... Sister of Levi's wife? No, she... Well, Levi didn't really marry Rachel. Say Shammai? Yes, we treat it as such because the fact that he did mama to Rachel allows us to uh, treat her as his sort of wife. In which case, it pushes away. It's doicha, the tzara, pushes away. Leah, Levi just proceeds with Rachel and Leah is exempt. So it accomplishes that much. It preempts. It negates the competing wife. That's how far it goes, but not further than that. It doesn't actually make, you know, Mamar can't actually be considered like an Ederson. So according to that approach, Michael and Mamar now we're stuck. Our hope Gemara was based on the premise that Mamar really accomplishes like a regular Ederson, and it's not so. So back to the question. A Shemer Siyavim, who's awaiting two brothers. Why does Rebelezer allow Hafaras and Darn? since it's not yet uh, defined, it hasn't been designated. We haven't really verified who the Yavam will be. You can't answer, well, one of them did mamar. That's not enough to create that bond, like a regular husband and wife. Answers the Gemara, we have another solution. Why we shall treat the Yavama like a regular Arusa? Why we should allow the Yavam to have a forest in the Durham? We're speaking about the following case. True, we have two brothers. Each one can be a Yavam. One of them, you know, decided he doesn't want to do it. We have a Yavam here who's willing to do it, committed. Ahmad Badin, we took him to the Din and we set up an appointment. You're going to do Yavam. And then he, uh, you know, he's taking his time and he. He uh, skips town, <laughs> in which case the Allah is, he has to support her. He has to pay her bills. And that changes the equation. Going forward, the Yivama will program, will direct her nadarm as per this fellow's wishes. When you're being supported by somebody, you accommodate him. Uqtara Pinchas Mishmei as he tells us in the name of Rava, the Amar Kolanederis, Adas Balahinaderis. Every situation, every even a Ktana, a regular Ktana who's not really married to her husband, you know, there's a, you know, no real kedushin by a Ktana, let's say, right? But the fact that she's bound to him, the fact that she's um, coming on to him, she's uh, being supported by him. That leads her 
to um, to condition her nadarim upon his wishes. Here as well, we're speaking about a very unique case where the Yavim is actually supporting the Yavama. She's not yet married to him. She's a Shemeris Yavim, but he's, for some reason, paying her bills. Because of that, she will condition all her nadarim upon his ratzon, upon his consent, which allows him to interfere with her nadarim. Very simple. Because it's like a, a tanai. It's conditioned upon his his wanting those nadarim. Says the Pshat, Rabbi Lazar. Says the Gemara. It's not. Let's go back to the Mishnah. Let's take a look at Rabbi Lezer's words and see if, you know, if they're compatible with Rabbi Ami's Pshat. Rabbi Ami was the one who said that the reason why the Yavam, the one of two brothers, can do a first and done is because there was mamar done between him and her. Let's take a look at the wording in the Mishnah and see if it fits. Sinat, Amr Belezer. I will prove that a Yavam can do a Varsan Dharam. Umayim Isha Shekhan Allah Atzmal. Hari Yumei Fanadarea. If we find that a personal wife, a regular condition, allows a Varsan Dharam, certainly if it came from heaven, if it was mandated by the Torah, Isha Shekhan Allah Atzmal Shemaim, certainly a Yavama who came to him from Shemaim, Enoi Din Shemei Fanadarea, does not lend us to believe that, yes. Certainly, he, have, he has a farce in Durham over her in Durham. That's the uh, phrase that we find in the Mishnah. Question. According to you, Rabbi Ami, the Yavam played you know, a part, a very crucial part in this process because he did Mamr. That enables him to do a farce in Durham, right? If in fact, we're speaking that he did Mamr, Kanalatz Mayu. Why does the Mishnah refer to it as Minah Shemaim? It's his own acquisition. It's his mamar. It's his kinyan. And says the Gemara Shekana La'atzmai Aliyah Shemaim. True, he contributed. He did mamar, but it's based on the fact that she was already, you know, a yavama offered to him by the Torah. So that adds weight to the process, and that would lead us to the conclusion that we treat her even more than a regular Arusa. That's what Rebbe meant. It's a sort of a joint. It's a combined factor here. The fact that it's Minash Shemai and then he did a, a Maser. That's even more reason to believe that it works. Says the Gemara. Here comes another question. So we're um, working with the premise that there was Mamar done. And that allows the Yavam to do a first and done. Right? Now typically we know that by a Na'ara uh, Hamurasa, the Arus, the, you know, the fiancé, can't just do it on his own. He has to join forces with the father, right? B'shutfas. Question is, it sounds like, you know, Rebbe is allowing the Yavam to do a Farsan Dharma on his own. Why? Because he did Mamr. Tiv Shait Debai Rabba. This would perhaps shed clarity on Rabba's question in terms of how to define the nature of the imama process. How far does it go? What does it accomplish? Engagement? Or even farther than engagement, even marriage. Mamar the Beishama, according to Shita's Beishama, who reckoned with Mamar, he treated like a proper Kenyan. How far does it go? Erosun Oise, Enesun Is she merely like an engaged Isha? Or does it go even further? We treat it as though he married her. And if she passes away, he's Yerush her. If he's a Kayan, he can become tummy uh, by tending to her burial like a regular husband and wife. How far does Mamar go? What does it take then? Tifshait, so according to our Gemara, you can perhaps conclude the Nisun Isa, that it accomplishes marriage. The fact that we're allowing the Yavim to do a first Dhamma on his own in the case that Mamar accomplishes such. It makes Nisun the Eirus and Isa because if it's only going to get it to the point of Eirusin, we have a protocol to follow. Hatanam, we have a Mishnah. Which says Nara Hamurasa. An Isha was just engaged. Future husband doesn't have monopoly. Avia Ubala, Mefir and Darea. Future husband and her father joined forces to do a first and term. How can you allow the Yavan to do it on his own? 
Is that a raya? That it makes more than just erosin? Omar Rach Maritz like, no. Ma yafer. When Rebbeza says, the Yavam could do afara, he didn't mean on his own. Yafar bishutfis, of course, together with the father. Because perhaps mamers not more than just erosin. So bottom line is, according to Rabbi Ami, the reason why according to Rabbi Lezer, Hashem Eres Yavam, can have a farce in Durham, even when there are two brothers awaiting the mitzvah sibum with her, the two candidates, and there is no one designated, there was, you know, it, 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 we have potential for either one, so then, it's not like a regular husband, so why? Does that far work? The answer is, we're speaking about there was, we're speaking that there was um, a mamardam. In which case, one of them is sort of designated as the, as the potential Yavam. We treat him like an Arus. In fact, we have a Brisa, which supports Rabbi Ami's approach to the Sugya, that indeed we are speaking about a case where there was Mamar, which designates the Yavama to this specific brother. The following Brisa will present, you know, the three Shittas again, regarding the ability to do a Farah by Hashem Eres Yavim, and... You know, if we pay close attention to the wording in the Brisa, we will see, in fact, that we're speaking that it was Mamar done. So the Brisa says, Shemir Yavam, right? This is Yavama, Ben Yavam Echa, and Ben Shnei Yavam, and whether there is one or two brothers. Rabbi Lezer Ami Yafar, Hafar is applicable, Rishon Ami Echa, Lezer Shnaim, when there's one brother, sure, go ahead, do Hafar, but not when there are two brothers, because it's undefined. Rabbi Kiva says, never, nothing doing. Rabbi Kiva, Yemir Lezer Echa, Lezer Shnaim. Amr Rabbi Lezer, I don't understand. Umayim Isha, She'en Lechelek Pa. Take a look at an ordinary, an ordinary, you know, uh, Isha. A chasen has no rights to her, has no control. Prior to acquiring her, prior to condition. No connection whatsoever, total stranger. Still, even though they start from zero, once she enters his domain, once he does kedushin, she's connected to him. She's now under his control. The chassan can now do afaras and darim with with her father, of course. So, f- in such a case where you go from zero all the way to you know to, to yes hafara, certainly in a case of a yavama, where you're starting off you know in a much better place, isha sheish nechelik ba actually tavul shusa by yavama, where he sort of has control, he has a shach, he has a connection even before. He does anything before he does any mom or anything. She is his yivhama. She's bound to him. This has some sort of relationship from day one. He's not starting at zero. He's starting way higher. Of course, certainly, definitely, in this case, we should allow the afara to happen. Mishabasla rishus. Once she enters his rishus, which the Gemara soon will interpret to mean mamar. Once some con- more connect, further connection is done, of course she's connected to him. She's completely in his rishus with respect to Avaris and Dharma. It's Rabbi Lezer's argument. Omer of Akiva? No. Absolutely not. No. If Avara applies to a regular Isha, who a person personally acquires, that makes sense. Because she's exclusively bound to him. She says, the fact is that before he does Kedushin, just as he can't, he has no connection to her, total strangers, likewise others have no connection to her, meaning a stranger in the street, no connection to anybody. So now when he walks over and is Makadashur, now she's his. At the exclusion of anybody else. Toyma Isha. As opposed to Yevama. Sure, it's heaven sent, but realize there are other brothers here who have a say in the matter. Even before anything happened, just as he has a connection, she's his Yevama. The other brothers as well are players. They have a say. And therefore, no thing is so undesignated and so not personal. And therefore, you can't compare it to a regular Isha. So even after Mamar, you know, it's just not comparable to a regular Isha. She's connected to many uh, candidates here. It's not personal. I'm going to be sure. So Rishua tells him, Akiva, I, I, I'm trying to understand what you're saying. 
I understand your argument. That works when there are two brothers. Fine, so she's not designated. It's not comparable to a regular husband and wife. But what if there's only one Yavam here? Why can't you agree with Rabbi Lezer? In this case, she's exclusively designated for him. And therefore, after Mama, she certainly is. But even without Mama. Right? The fact that she's bound to him, Zika, that should be enough as well. So bottom line is, your argument works when there are two Yavam. But at least, at least when there's just one Yavam. The fact that she's his Yavama should allow him to do a Faris Nadarim. Amr Laser Akira says nothing to him. I don't differentiate between one Yavam and two Yavam, it doesn't matter. Klum Chilaknu, Al Yavam Echad, Al Yavam. It makes no difference if there's one brother or two brothers. Ben Shah Asaba Mamar, whether they did the Mamar, Ben Shah Layas Mamar, we did not do the Mamar, it doesn't matter. I disagree entirely with this concept. I, I don't hold up the Zika thing. You know, either you're married or you're not. The fact that you're potentially, you know, his yavam doesn't matter. You can't compare it to regular avos. So Rabbi Shua, upon hearing this argument, this response, was very impressed. Uke, uh, one second, slowly, slowly. and and um, Rabbi Kiva concludes. There's a reason why I don't consider a yavama like a regular isha. Just like when it comes to other halachas, we do not consider a yavama like a regular arusa, such as skila, a na'ara who's engaged, who now gets involved with another man. Skila is applied. That's unique to a na'ara murasa. By a yavama, we don't have that. Sure, she's bound to him, she's slated for him, she's designated for the yavama, but she's not like murasa. She gets involved with another man, there's no skila. They love, but not no skila. We don't treat her like partially married. So that's Rabbi Kiva's rationale to differentiate between a Yavama, who he does not consider even partially married to the Yavama, as opposed to a regular Isha Makodesha, who is. Ugashar Devarim, just like other things, meaning penalty regarding Znos. Kay, Nadarim, likewise, we will treat Nadarim, in which case a Yavama is not like an Isha Makodesha. Forget about doing a forest Nadarim at this state. Ben Azai, upon hearing this uh, response from Rukiva, was very impressed. Belashna Azamar Ben Azai. Ben Azai responds as follows Chaval Alecha Ben Azai. He was sort of relating to himself. A pity on you, Ben Azai. I'm sorry that I lost the opportunity. Shaloi Shemashta, so Rukiva. Ben Azai, right? Referring to himself, expressed regret. He says, A pity on you, Ben Azai, referring to himself, that you haven't spent more time with Rukiva learning from him. Look how sharp, look how insightful he is. Okay, end of discussion. So we had a full presentation of the, you know, the Machlekes here. And we will seek to derive from here that in fact are Belezer's novel Chiddush. That even when there are two brothers, two Yevamen, Hafara is applicable, is because there was Ma'amar done between him and her. My Tanya Kavaseh Rabami. Where do we see in this price any reference to mamar that was done? Very simple. Midiktani, because look how Rabbi Kiva responds. Midiktani says, I don't differentiate between yes, mamar, no mamar. Apparently, mamar was the story. Mamar is the reference point. Midiktani ben she'asar ba mamar. Ben she'asar ba mamar. Just like when there was no mamar done, there's no connection, there's no afaris in term. Even when there was mamar done, I disagree entirely, so apparently. Rabbi Lezer's Chiddush was based on the fact that there was Ma'amar done. So you see a writer of Ami's approach to the Sugi. Inami, another uh, diuk from the Lashon. Miresha, because in the beginning of the uh, you know, of the dialogue we have these words. So Reb Lezer, you know, presented his Kavachayma, an ordinary Isha, a non-Yivama, prior to Kedushin, no connection. But once there was Nechan Salur Shusay, there was Kedushin done, you agree to me, her future husband could do a first in time, right? And certainly by the Yavama, right? We should say that uh, of course, there's a connection which allows a first in time. In the case that there was 
some sort of entry, there was some sort of connection, some sort of acquisition, which indicates that there was Mama. Vida Lei Kodesh now, uh, if he wouldn't have done any Kedushin, any Mama, my Nigmar Olay, what does it mean Nigmar Olay? Apparently we're speaking that there was a Kedushin done. That supports our Pshat and our Blessed, there was Mama done. Tishat Minei. So we have a conclusion from here. Because she also was Mama, then in fact there was Mama done. So bottom line is we have a right to Rabbi Ami's approach. The reason why I quote Rabbi Lezer, Hashemeres Yovam Lushnei Yovam has a first endowment is because one of them did Mama, and Mama creates a connection. And one more thing to verify, what, what did Rekiva had in mind? What did he have in mind when he said, you know, Yovam um, is not really connected to her Yovam. Similar to, you know, to an Arusa to the Chasim. It's different. In which way, in which way is it different? My dvarim kinadarim. He's comparing. He's saying just like by other things, we don't consider her like a regular arusa. Here as well by nadarim. Why? What does he mean? My ukushar nadarim dvarim kinadarim v'iktani. What do you mean? I'm a rabbi. V'iktani meant like this, as we explained before regarding skila iyata moide. Rabbi Kiva is responding. He says, "Don't you agree to me? She'ein chayavan skila kinara murasa. Ayivam is so different than a regular naara hamurasa, who when she strays gets skila." We don't treat a Yavama like that, apparently. The connection isn't as strong. And therefore, when it comes to Afaras and Dharam as well, we don't treat her like a regular Murasa, Yavam cannot do Afara. Maravashi, Masis Namideka. The wording in Al Mishnah as well. If you take a close look at the wording there, you'll see that in fact this was Rabbi Kiva's response. He's being arrived from Skila. The mission concludes with the words, Ein Hayavama Gmura Lisha. The relationship between the Yavama and the Yavam isn't really complete. Kashem Sha'arusa Gmura Lisha just, it's not comparable to an Arusa who's connected to her future husband by way of Kedushin. Now, why did Rabbi Kivi use the words, Ein Yavama Gmura Lisha? Isha's marriage, husband wife relationship, apparently. He was alluding to this idea of straying. That unlike an Arusa, who's Gemura Isha, her relationship is bound, it's connected, to the point that if she strays, she gets skila. So he's speaking about marriage and living as married, related issues. You don't have that by the Yivam. Ain't Yivam a Gemura Isha. That's why he chose the word Isha. He didn't say Yivam a Gemura Yivama. The, uh, the lady, you know, the woman Yavam is not connected to the Yavam, Yavama, Mapeke, to her Yavam. He chose a different word, Ein Yavama Gmurli Isha. The Yavama isn't really connected to her husband. He used that word very specifically to bring out his point. There is no husband wife, wife relationship here. It's not like a fiance, it's not like an Arus with respect to if she would stray, what penalty to apply. She doesn't get the skila like a regular Nanama Rasa, and therefore, when it comes to Afaras and as well, we don't treat her like a regular Mu Rasa, and there is no Afaras and Dharma. The bottom line is, what is the Allah of Hashemir Yavam regarding Afaras and Dharma? Rugleza says, in all cases, yes. Whether it's one Yavam, Yeish Zika, two Yavam, how does that work? Either one of them did Mamar, so she's designated for him, and Mamar is a strong connection. Or he was Chayv Mazainis, and that. Uh, empowers him to nullify her in the Dharma, which were done conditional to his consent. Uh, Rabbi Shua agrees, you know, uh, it, to one aspect, Yesh Zika, but that only if th- that's only if there's one brother. So she's meant for him. We treat him like uh, like a husband. Rabbi Kiva says nothing to him. A Shemeros Yavam is not like an Arusa, as we see regarding Skila, and therefore... A Faris and Dharam in this type of situation is non-existent. All the best to you and may we have much Hatzlacha.